Hey lovelies, Carla Nicole, Wisdom Coach. Um, if you're not aware yet, I do have a YouTube channel called Carla Nicole Wisdom Channel. So be sure to subscribe to, to my channel today. So um, I want to talk about um, love and um, how we can improve the odds on um being with someone that um is a better match i'll put it that way um and to be totally honest with you i find that you know improving the odds when it comes to love helps mostly when you spend quite a bit of time alone believe it or not i know that seems crazy it seems unbelievable but um if you have a season where you are by yourself and um you are learning yourself you'll find that you will have a better chance at finding someone that matches not only um, you by uh, interest, for instance, but they also match you because of their knowledge of you. I know that seems bizarre, but the more you know about you, the more you can convey to the person you're interested in what you have to offer, who you are, what your expectations are, what you desire, what your needs are. So the reason I say that this is important is a lot of times we don't really, <laughs> we're not alone long enough to really know exactly what it is we need. Not necessarily what we want, but what we need. See, and... <sighs> By being a wisdom coach and having various clients on various different um, cylinders, if you will, um, the different clients that I deal with, I deal with women and men, but primarily it's, it's my male clientele that seem to really get puzzled by the women they're choosing <laughs> because you know, um, a lot of times in the dating scene, if you will, um, we put on what we want to see. I mean, we don't go on our first date and start passing gas and belching at the table and scratching under our arms. We're very polished, aren't we? We talk about our good parts. We talk about how we are in the best phase of who we are. Because we certainly don't want to tell somebody, well, I am a basket case. You know, you should see all the medicines in my medicine cabinet. Listen, I got all kinds of problems going on. I have this. I have that. We just don't. We don't do that. We don't. We don't proceed into a dating arrangement or even when we're in a getting to know phase with someone. We just don't come to the table with all of our flaws and dump them all on top of the table and say, this is all of my BS and this is all of my flaws and are you willing to accept that <laughs> and so that person gets a chance to sift through that BS and your drama and say yeah I'll take you on that's not how it works in the real world we put on our best foot we put on our best foot we put our best foot forward just like we do when we go to a job interview we certainly don't tell them where I look I'm coming to this job to tell you, I mean, to this interview, to let you know, I'm always going to be late, okay? I really do a half ass job. I don't really take initiative with learning anything extra. We, do, we just don't, do we? We don't do that kind of thing. We just don't. And so um, when we are in the dating phase or when we are interested in somebody, we don't want them to know right off all of our flaws, all of our all of our things that we may not even want to admit to ourselves. So, um, you know, when we're in the dating phase, you know, um, 
a lot of times we feel like, you know, well, you don't want to take me on. Like, look at the perfect me. And what I'm finding is that a lot of people, um, justifiably, they don't want perfect. They don't want a perfect person be before them. They want somebody authentic. They want to know, they want to get to know you. And, and they want to know you and your true honest self. But again, like I said earlier, in order to, you know, I think improve the odds of the love and, and establishing a good, healthy relationship is actually being alone, spending time alone, learning yourself, learning what you need. And, um, and when I talk about what you need, it's not just about what you need socially, it's not just about what you need sexually. It's not just about what you need from them um, as far as acts of kindness or acts of what they provide to you. I'm talking about what are your needs. You know, a lot of times we go into relationships and we really can't convey what we need, but we expect the person that we're interested in to know what it is we need. And so on the surface, we'll just say, as for instance, on the surface, a lot of times, um, people are under the assumption that all women love flowers or all women love jewelry or all women love to be taking, taken somewhere or whatever, what have you. So there's this misconception that all women have a certain liking down the board. Every woman likes this. Every woman needs that. And that's just not the case. So what I find to be a challenge is that a lot of times we really don't sit back and say, well, what does this woman desire? What does this woman truly want? What does this woman, you know, need? So I want to give you guys something that I think is very important. A lot of times we just don't talk about this stuff. And, and I'm always big about giving a unique, you know, a unique perspective with a twist, with a twist of wisdom, okay? So I want you guys to think about something and understand that, you know, you don't want to bombard somebody with all your flaws. And of course, you don't want to bombard yourself with the fake version of yourself either. You don't want them thinking you're someone you're not or thinking you're this when you're really this. Because again, when someone is interested in you or wants to spend time with you or is interested in, in, um, you know, dating you full time, they're going to want to know who you are. <laughs> so when you cast off all this perfect, oh, I'm perfect. I don't do any wrong. I don't have any flaws. You know, um, it's hard for someone to really, truly begin to freaking get to know you. And then, and then begin to, and in the know, see and understand the knowledge of you and their in their phase of growing to like you and then growing to hopefully love and care about you comes from the knowledge of knowing you and your true, honest, flawless, I'm sorry, flawed self. Because a lot of times we don't want to be showing that we have flaws, that we have body odor, that we have bad breath, that we have, you know, gas in our stomach. We don't want to show any of that. That's not something we want to show. We much rather show you know, the pretty side, right? So all of this is something that I think is imperative that we think about, especially before we get into relationships. And when you're talking about getting into a relationship full time, there's some things about you that that person or those people, they need to know. And a lot of times we don't want to be honest with ourselves. So when I said earlier how important it is to um, spend time with yourself, it's vitally important you spend time with knowing and getting to know you. What is it about you that you love? I mean, what is it? What is what is some of your best attributes? What are you coming to the table with? I mean, really, do we do we ever really think about that? If you were on the other side of that table, would you date you? Would you date you? I mean, would you be attracted to who you are? See, and the thing is, I always say that energy precedes action, okay? Energy precedes action. What that means is, if you're wanting to desire to be with someone, 
you should become the person, the very person you would love to be in a relationship with. This is one of the best things you can do to find yourself um, in a relationship with someone that is, is more your match. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about what your, what your actual needs are. And we don't often think about what it is we need because we think about everything that we want, right? Oh, if you notice, people always say, especially women, we want them tall, we want them dark, and we want them handsome. And we definitely want them to have um, enough to provide for us and all this other stuff. But what is it that we need first? What do we truly need in a relationship? One of the things that I think we very often miss is the engagement piece. We get so ecstatic and so excited when a friend of ours, especially women on on our side, women on, you know, it doesn't matter what age, women that have their friend come to them and say, hey, I'm engaged, I'm getting married. And everybody's excited and everybody's partying and jumping up and down. And he's a perfect man for you and blah, 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 and all that exciting stuff. But we really don't realize engagement is truly important. And when I say engagement, I'm talking about being able to engage with each other. And that can mean having a... time of engagement with each other on a daily basis that requires nothing but just being present in the time with each other and a lot of times we don't spend enough time together with our mate with who we want to be in love with or who we are claiming to be in love with we don't really spend enough time together what i mean by time is we're not conversing we're not in touch enough. We're not we're not talking enough. And we're really not taking the time to really sit back and say, "Hey, you know, I care about you. Tell me about your day. What's going on? Are you having a good day, a bad day, a mediocre day? What's going on? Are you was is it something that I missed since you left this morning? Is it something that I missed that we didn't talk about last night?" So there's just not enough engagement. And this is something that many of us miss. See, we talk about the dwindling and the um, the sexless relationships. If, if you noticed, if anybody who's been following me or who is a, um, a, a subscriber of my YouTube channel or even, you know, a follower of mine on Facebook knows I've been tackling the sexless relationships. But really, we get to the sexless part and to the sexless piece of a relationship nine times out of ten because there's not enough intimacy during the course of the day. There's not enough time where we're engaging with each other. There's not enough time where we're spending time understanding each other. There's often a lot of misunderstandings and misunderstandings means because we haven't had enough time understanding or overstanding, should I say, each other's mannerisms, um, how they relate to each other. Are they conversing with each other? Are they talking about each, you know, each other's perspectives? Can they relate to each other's perspective? A lot of times we're with a re we're in a, within a relationship by name only. We'll say I'm in a relationship with him or I'm in a relationship with her, but really don't know a lot about each other. There's a lack, if you will, of understanding that person, understanding them in their totality. So that means understanding them even in their flaws, even in the things that we don't want to hear. We don't spend enough time understanding each other. So what happens is we, we get in these relationships and a lot of times it's in relationship only by name. And so... When you sit back and you look at it, you're like, man, I didn't really realize that I don't really talk to you enough. I mean, yeah, you, you know, we're boyfriend and girlfriend or, you know, whatever, but I don't spend enough time engaging with you. And so when it comes time to 
being alone and spending time, it's like, I don't really know who you are. And it's because it's not enough engagement. That is key for intimacy. That is key for establishing a relationship. We don't spend enough time, like I said earlier, we don't spend enough time alone to know ourselves. But then when you're in the relationship, you're not spending enough time engaging with each other. So therefore, there's a lack of understanding. And so when there's a lack of understanding each other, then there's a huge high probability there's going to be a lot of misunderstandings because nobody is really understanding each other. So I'm going to interpret some of the things you say to mean something that's completely different than what you're trying to convey to me. Because there's not really a true understanding with each other. And so we're like, I'm lost. I don't get it. Or, you know, some, you know, a little smirk or something you can interpret to mean something that's totally wrong. The smirk may be something about something else. So it's like even small mannerisms can cause us to make a prejudice or prejudicial view of something and can throw us off into a whole nother event of destruction of the relationship and this is why i say it's important you know which i think is vital especially with within the newness of relationships is talking a lot on video chat because you can get to see someone's humor style you can learn a lot about their facial expressions and what they say because a lot of times what we hear and what we see is two totally different things over the phone. But when we see you saying something, a lot of what we say and convey to each other is nonverbal. So again, how do I know what you're saying or how do I understand what you're meaning without truly getting to know you? And these are things that challenges us, I think, a lot of times. Because we just don't have enough time in. We don't have enough time in with understanding. This is something I really want to I really want to do. I really want to improve on. But we can't because we're so busy hung up on, oh, did you say that? What does that mean? And that's not and what you're interpreting it to mean is completely and totally wrong. So again, this is why I say it's vitally important that we spend time together and engage with each other and learn each other so that we can truly start to understand there are things in a relationship that is going to help us to beat the odds of having a, a failed relationship. Now here's the thing. In order to improve the odds of the love lottery, we first have to know how to play the game in love. And the easiest part about it is we have to start sitting back and understanding that what we need and what we desire to have, we must first desire to have it in ourselves. And once we get that, then things start to happen more in our favor. Then we start to seeing a lot more things going in a better direction because now we're not so caught up in, well, you know, he's not this, she's not that. There's actually a time of understanding each other in a non-judgmental space. And when we take off the cloak of trying to be something we're not and trying to appear to be perfect in the dating phase of the relationship and we start to be who we are and be more humble and be who we truly are in our true authentic self, it changes everything. Because we're, see, to me, I think when we're putting the cloak on or putting the fake, this is me, fake me, um, mask on, a lot of times it's to, it's because of your own fear of showing who you are to not just them, but to you. What are you hiding behind? Are you afraid someone won't value you because you aren't perfect? But understand, nobody's perfect. So, you know, if they don't, if they don't find a resonance with you or if they're not attracted to you or they're not, you know, interested in being with you in that degree, don't take it personal. There's four, five billion people in the, on the planet. 
somebody is out here for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you don't have to feel like, well, I, you know, and it's not just one person either. There's many people that could be a match for you. But it just comes down to being in your most authentic self will help you to find the person that actually fits you to the best of your ability. And sometimes it's someone that you would least expect. They might not be uh, tall, dark, and handsome. They might not be. But yet, they're everything you need, though. But in order to see them, you have to get past thinking that I have to have this physical attribute or all the, all, everything I see has to match what I like in order for me to be attracted. You might be missing some good people. Because sometimes everything isn't packaged in the way we want it to be packaged. It's just not. So if that's the case, guess what? You might find yourself with a person that has a, a wonderful attraction to you and may actually be the best lover, the best friend you're needing, the best confidant, um, the best protector, the you know, someone that really has your back. And you're like, man, I would have missed you if I would have been so caught up in what you physically appear to be. Because I would have never knew you were all of these things. But that person that is showing you who they are in their totality, be happy about that. Don't always seek to find perfect. In the world of all of these people on the planet, we can get out of thinking that there's just nobody out here. That's truly not true. So it's very important that you step back, you look to see how can I beat the odds of this love thing? What can I do to make it just thrive and be amazing? By becoming who you want in your life. Just that simple. That's one of the best ways to, to really improve you know, your relationship, your loving, your your desire of who you want to be in your life. I'm just saying. So again, I'm Carla Nicole. I have a wisdom coaching uh, page called Carla Nicole Wisdom Coaching Services. Go over there and like my page. If you're wanting to join my course called Love Lottery, I actually talk about how to improve your odds on loving um, and, and it, it's, it's a powerful course and the course is for, for, it's designed for gentlemen because a lot of times I get these questions from the gents wanting to know what can I do to have better odds at this love thing. I'm just not getting it right. I'm getting everything else right. My business is thriving. You know, my kids relationship with me is wonderful, but the love department, man, I can't get it right check out my course it's called love lottery and tell you what it'll help you trust me i had a gentleman go through my love lottery before he was he was a part of the pilot course and i'm tell you what he um <laughs> turned his whole relationship around i actually saw the picture of the woman he was with but who he's with now and i said oh is that your lady friend or he's like yes i'm like that's the same one <laughs> he's like yeah i'm so i said remember you took my course and you were not you weren't doing so hot he said i changed some things after i had that after i had that course i changed some things and it's refreshing because now his relationship looks wonderful and they got back on track and everything is working fine so it was fun because I just wanted to test it out just to see and after our conversations and after he did the work the inner work and he he did some things that he didn't realize that he was doing and made some changes to that and he just he just is now in a better space with his lady and I like I said I thought it was a different woman and here it was the same one but they were both so bright and smiling and I thought well, my God, he's he done found love again. And here it was the same woman. They just both separated for a while. She got herself together. He got himself together. And then they reunited. And then um, 
yeah so love lottery definitely helps and you know for those of you gentlemen that you know you're not you don't have anybody in sights right now but i can help you help yourself to um kind of build your confidence back up because it is i mean this is a whole new day going out here in this dating world it's a whole new day so it's better if you can actually take your time and meet somebody nice and um and make sure that you're you're picking and choosing a partner to the best of your ability. That's the most important thing. Because it's easy to pick somebody, but is it the person that you really desire to be with? And are they going to meet your needs or are they just easy on your eyes? So, again, um, be sure to uh, sign up for Love Lottery. I, I do have enrollment. Um, available right now so you can go in there and, and sign up for the enrollment and once I once I roll this course out you're you're gonna be the first to uh, get the email that it's ready hot and ready off the press and you can take the course so listen it's awesome so um, I'm out of here guys I hope I helped you guys I hope you have a great weekend um, just like I said I hope I helped you all right I'm out of here it's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a good night. Bye.